Again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-595-2614 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 595-2614 to take your call now. Call 800-595-2614. That's 800-595-2614. Again, 800-595-2614. You want to know what time it is? It's time to bring the rain. Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. A good morning to you one and all, all of you wonderful liberty lovers, as well as you grand and great ecclesiastites. It is I, your lovable host, Elrod, coming to you live from the Bunker Eye studio. Somewhere within the great grand estate of New Hampshire, where the state motto is, live free or die. It is not big government or bust. Uh, it, here it is on Monday. May the 2nd in the year of our Lord, 2016. Can somebody please tell me what happened to April? What happened to April? And that month of April 2016, now in the history books. Man, did that month just fly by. Uh, and uh, it is uh, next week, uh, beginning of the week, I, I do believe on the 10th, 9th or the 10th, I will be down in Florida. I think it's the Sarasota era, area. Uh, giving a keynote down there to the wonderful people down in Florida. Looking forward to it. Uh, you know, lots of stuff going on. Call in number, by the way, same as usual, 603-672-0573. Uh, busy weekend for me. I'm a little, little, uh, little tired from the weekend, but it's all good. It's kind of a good tired. Uh, it doesn't slow me down mentally at all. Actually, I don't think it's really slowing me down physically either, but, you know, it's just one of those things. You, you got to live life while you can, right? Uh, because we know that in our in our twilight years, if if you're so lucky to get through, you know, your, your first three quarters of your life healthy, uh, you don't, you, you got the last quarter of your life to slow down. And, and but, but by the I've heard of people not slowing down at all. I mean, they're, they're still probably, there are people out there that, that are in their 80s and 90s that have schedules, I mean, physical schedules. That would exhaust even a thirty or forty year old person. So, uh, that, no, I, guess, I guess you don't. You know, the old saying is, uh, "You you'll rest when you die," and then you'll be resting for all eternity. You know, Zig Ziglar once said this, and, and I kind of take it to heart. But Zig Ziglar said something that, if, for those of you in the Rush Limbaugh's real Linda, I, I mean, th- there are a lot of you out there who probably, uh, if you're a millennial especially, you probably don't know who. Zig Ziglar is. you never heard of him. Uh, Zig Ziglar is a rather famous, rather successful sales trainer and motivational uh, motivationalist. And um, I remember my early days in the field of motivation and sales. Uh, Zig Ziglar uh, was a big part of it. Him and Og Man- Mandino. Uh, Og was one of my favorites. Uh, Og Mandino actually lived in Peterborough, New Hampshire, by the way. Um, and uh, it wasn't too long ago that, <clears throat> uh, well, I guess it has been a while now. Uh, he passed away. Ah, it's been a while. It's over a decade, probably a good fifteen years. But I remember sh- uh, not too not too many a couple of years after his death, Augmandino's house was listed for sale, and there was a, a real estate firm 
uh, I think it was Auger Realty is what it was the name of the real estate firm at, at that time, had the listing. And um, and they sold, uh, they had the listing for his house, and they sold his house. And I always wanted to just actually get the chance to to go and look at it, but it was only by inv- now. It wasn't all that expensive. I don't th- think it was. It was less than a million dollars that it was being sold for. And you know, Peterborough is not exactly a high high real estate uh, cost market. Um, excuse me, not Peterborough, Jaffrey, Jaffrey, New Hampshire. Now, Jaffrey is not exactly a uh, a high end real estate market. Uh, although Jaffrey does uh, abut Dublin, New Hampshire, and Dublin uh, happens to be the home of uh, Yankee Magazine, you know, Old Farmer's Almanac, that type of thing, Yankee Magazine. Yeah, that is where Yankee Magazine is headquartered. Uh, but Dublin is a high-end real estate town. I mean, it, it, there, there are million-dollar mansions all over the place uh, in Dublin. Uh, and that and that abuts Jaffrey. And Jaffrey is, is the exact opposite. Jaffrey is an is an old New England mill town, and that is where Ogmandino set down his roots. And he lived there for years and years. Um, but uh, and in fact, one of his books, "A Better Way to Live," he actually writes about you know, the, the setting. It's kind of like Stephen King. The setting is is based in that area of New Hampshire. Uh, you know, he talks about. Jaffrey, I think he talks about Dublin and uh, and Stoddard um, and places like that. And um, yeah, Stoddard is uh, well, not Stoddard, but Sullivan. Sullivan is uh, maybe it was Stoddard too. Uh, Sullivan used to be. For those of you who are into stoneware, it used to be Granite State Stoneware. Uh, now, at what, when they were still making Granite State Stoneware, it was rather famous and it was rather expensive. Now, I don't think I think the uh, the couple that started it and ran it, I think they retired. And they just—they didn't sell out. They just stopped making it. Uh, on for, for for people who like that type of uh, dishware, stoneware, uh, that was a sad day. And uh, it was—they had some very unique stuff because they had a—they had a, a factory store in Sullivan, and I—I I, I went in there, and it was um, it, it, some beautiful stuff. Uh, and some of it was rather weird looking. But it was incredible what they were capable of, of doing. Uh, and it was not inexpensive. I mean, if you're looking at a stoneware plate by them, uh, I think one of the cheapest ones was $35. Not for a set, for a single plate. And we're talking back in the nineteen late 1990s. So, th- again, not cheap stuff. It is definitely something you did not want to break. Uh, but plus, if you broke it, it would be very difficult to because re- all that stuff was handcrafted and, you know, one at a time. So no two pieces looked alike, obviously, um, not, not like the factory stuff that we have today. But um, it, it was, you know, basically that was the kind of stuff that they used to have as, you know, besides metal tinware uh, dishware, uh, stoneware was the was the way to go that was what you had and the expensive stuff was was bone china and and other types of china uh not not stoneware stoneware back in the you know the 1800s and stuff was was the cheap stuff uh, now it ain't so cheap uh, but um yeah so he used to live in 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 jaffrey new hampshire still pretty much a mill town uh without the mills obviously uh, pretty much a blue collar town not not exactly high end real estate there but uh, if you ever heard of Zig Ziglar if you haven't heard of him I, I suggest you look him up there's probably all kinds he has tons of books and recordings and stuff like CDs and stuff so you could probably get all this stuff at Amazon I'm sure but Zig Ziglar once said kind of a roundabout way of getting back to what I was talking about Zig Ziglar once said and, and this stuck with me he said, you're, you're, you're going to be alive for a very short period of time. But you're going to be dead forever. So you might as well live. Now, I, I, I know some people might think, well, geez, that's kind of depressing. It's not really depressing. I mean, look, it, if you, 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 are, you, are, you and I are but 
a spec on the timeline. And we're only here for a very brief flash in time. But we, what we do in that very brief flash in time can and does affect people for generations, if not centuries, to come. Case in point, Jesus Christ, 2,000, over 2,000 years after his birth, we're still talking about him. We're still trying to live by his, by his teachings. He has split time. So, obviously, I don't believe that there's a human alive today that could, that, that could have the impact that Jesus Christ has had. But it does not mean that you cannot at least leave your mark. And that's what this program today is going to be a lot about, about leaving your mark. Now, you can leave your mark in a negative or in a positive manner. It's your choice. I know you can probably say, well, people can rewrite history and all that kind of stuff. And to some extent, that is accurate. But the reality is, no matter, uh, take Hitler, for instance, no matter how you rewrite history, that's a negative mark. For as long as humankind is around and keeping track of history, Hitler will always be known as an evil person. Now, of course, yeah, there are a few people who believe in the uh, the Nazi ideal, if you will, who don't think that he was evil. But uh, by and large, the vast majority of the human population will always and forever remember Adolf Hitler as being an evil person. And he's left an indelible mark. I mean, t- today, our, our modern society today is, is, uh, is strongly influenced by what he did and what he tried to do back in the 30s and 40s. So you can leave your, uh, uh, your legacy, if you will. You can leave a mark, if you will. Uh, but understand that it is, it's up to you. It's up to you how you leave your mark. Now, the vast majority of human beings, they, 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 they're born, they live their lives quietly. Uh, who was the author that said quiet desperation? I can't, you know, people live lives of quiet desperation. I don't believe that, really. I do not believe that, that statement at all. I believe that people try to live their lives, most people try to live their lives quietly. Most people do not want to be, uh, well, I guess that changes with the millennials, but most people don't want to necessarily be movie stars and music stars or any, any way in the limelight. They don't want to be you know, politicians or anything. They just want to have a quiet life. Now, most people, they, they do, you know, most people fantasize about being wealthy, you know, financially wealthy, rich, if you will. But most people will not even attempt to try to do that, other than possibly playing the lottery or bingo or some other contest of chance. They don't go out and work for it. They're quite comfortable and happy living their quiet life, making a decent living where they can pay their bills and go on vacation once in a while, you know, be able to pay their bills on time, uh, give to their family, leave something behind when they depart this, this, this life for their heirs, for their family, and leave a small mark. Not a mark that's going to change the world, just a mark that shows that they were here, that they were loved, and that they have family that remembers them. Now, frankly, as you move on, uh, most of us, I, 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 you know, I'm a realist, by the way. Now, most of us, you know, we're, we're not going to be remembered four or five generations in our own family from now. That's just the way things are. Do you remember your great-great-grandparents? Most people don't even know who, who, they, who they were, don't even know their names. There's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I'm not chastising anybody when it comes to living a life quietly. It's your life. It's your life that you need to live and you need to be able, you need to be free enough to be able to make the decision on how you live your life. It's yours and nobody else's. But we do have some people 
I call them the vast minority. We have the vast minority who wants to tell you how to live your life. Because for some reason, they get satisfaction, gratification, glorification out of telling other people how to live their lives. Most of the time, these people's own lives are a mess. But they think they have the wherewithal, the knowledge, the, the wisdom, uh, that's a laugh, uh, to tell other people how to live their own life. you got Hillary Clinton up there trying to tell you how to live your life. She wants to tell you how to Her life is a mess. Her own personal life is a complete, utter mess. She, got, she has a husband that she's stuck with that cheated on her. Not only cheated on her, repeated. He was a serial cheater, by the way. For all you Bill Clinton fans, and yeah, you know, Bill Clinton, you could say, he, and I've said it, that he's been, you know, he was kind of fun uh, in the white. He was, a, uh, you know, probably the, mo- the, the most fun president we've had in a very long time. But you know what? I don't want a fun president in the White House. I don't want a wh- I don't want a president who uses uh, the, the Oval Office and the White House as a, and the, or the West Wing or the rest of the White House as a brothel. Bill Clinton treated it like a brothel. And this woman stayed with him. And she knew from day one, back in the days when he was first elected to be governor of of their home state, or his home state of Arkansas, he was a cheater, he was a womanizer, he was probably, he was, you know, accused of of some of, of those days. He's been accused of rape. No, I don't. There's never been any charges. I don't believe about that. So we can't call Bill Clinton a rapist, but we can call him a womanizer. I mean, everybody runs around talking about how how Donald Trump hates women. Donald Trump hates women. Really? Last time I checked, Donald Trump didn't didn't get Lewinsky's in in Trump Tower by interns. Donald Trump didn't wasn't accused of raping people. I'm just saying. So here we have this woman whose personal life is a mess, has been a mess for decades, who now thinks that she's got the smarts, intelligence, and wisdom to tell the rest of us how to live. And Bernie Sanders isn't too much better. Bernie Sanders didn't get his first real steady paycheck until he was almost 40 years old, and then it was because he was elected to be mayor of Burlington, Vermont. So he's always been on the government dole. Is there any, is there any surprise as to why Bernie Sanders... Wants to give away free stuff from the government. Because the only time he's actually made any real significant steady money was from the government. He couldn't do it on his own. His life was a mess. And now he wants to try to tell everybody else how to live. See, these are people that can make that can leave lasting marks on the life on our lives and on our posterity's lives. Now, now a lot of, just you know, I know a lot of people looking down and say, "Well, I want my I want this country to be better for my children." Uh, hello, I I want this country to be better for for my children and my grandchildren, and that's about the extent of people's vision. I'm telling you, you got to think farther than that. You got to think out because the founders they thought out farther than that. The founders of the USA uh, of the USA have la- left an indelible, lasting mark on the psyche of humanity for all time because they thought beyond their children and grandchildren. They thought in terms of posterity, meaning their family for centuries to come. We're talking great-great-grandchildren and beyond. That's how our founders thought. Most of us don't think in those extended terms. And we don't think of those ex- in those extended terms. Why? Because most of us don't think beyond our own life. And for most of us, that's all we're going to see as far as our family. We're going to see our kids. We're going to see our grandkids. And as medical science and, and, uh, and health improve, we may get to actually see and get to know a little bit, watch our great-grandkids grow up to a certain age. But beyond that, unless we get to start living past the century mark on a regular basis, 
unless we get to be 130 or 150 years old, most of us will not see any of our family beyond great, great grandkids. And we don't even think that, most of us don't even think that far out. We think kids and grandkids, and that's it. Because we want to leave, we want to live a quiet life. We just want to be left alone. We don't want to, to try to go out there and make an indelible mark. But let me tell you something. Everything that you do leaves an indelible mark for your posterity for decades to come. And right now we're in the middle of about to decide such an indelible mark. It's called a presidential election. November 2016. And there's a lot of influences right now working on the candidates and the people of this country when it comes to that election. There's a lot. And if you, if, if, all you got to do is just look at what we've been through so far in this in this primary season. That it's you know, Frankly, this primary season is kind of like, you know, what people always talk about uh, about the NBA playoffs. They go on and on forever and ever. This primary season seems to be going on forever. I know it started over a year ago. That's why. And it's already been over a year since it all started. You know, we started having some of, some of the candidates that most of them have dropped out by now, uh, dropped out now. But uh, you know, candidates are start starting to officially declare back in March of 2015, and here we are, May second, the day after May Day, 2016. We're not even in the thick of it anymore. We're past the thick of it. We're coming to the end of the primary season. But what all of us quiet folk. All the people who want to live quiet lives and just only and, and, and only look to affect their kids and grandkids. What we're all about to do is we're about to f- affect our great grandkids and beyond. So even when you think that you're living a quiet life, what you do leaves a mark. That goes far beyond what you can possibly visually see. The problem is, is that our founders understood that and they could see beyond their great grandkids. The majority of Americans today, and indeed the majority of people on the planet today, cannot see beyond their grandkids. It's all they talk about. Again, there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, except because they're only considering the short term. The long term gets affected. And oftentimes when you're short-sighted because you're only thinking short term, you miss what could happen in the long term. Because let's face it, you know, it's, you can say, well, let, let them worry about it tomorrow. Well, tomorrow comes pretty darn fast. We're already 16 years into the new millennium. We're already 16 years into this new century. Now, are you where you thought you'd be or your family is where you thought you'd be at the start in 2016? Most, of it, most people will probably say no. Why? Because they don't think that far out. That's why. And you got to start thinking about that. We'll be back. You're listening to me, your lovable host, Elrod, here on The Rod Echo Show. Dr. Julianne Cooper here, author, historian, and co-host of The Right Group. If you're interested in current events from a conservative point of view, The Right Group is the show for you. Tune in every Tuesday from 4 to 6 p.m. right here at WLMW 90.7 FM, Manchester. Hi, this is Steve Kelly. And Mark Perkins. And we're the Free Money Guys on the Free Money Radio Network. Join us Fridays, 5 to 6 p.m., 
on WLMW 90.7 FM every Friday. We're here with your free money tips. We'll see you there. Right now, Direct TV is giving away a free TV when you sign up for only $19.99. Call 1-800-457-9695 right now. You heard me. Call 1-800-457-9695 right now and get a free TV when you sign up. Why spend your income taxes on a new TV when Direct TV is basically giving them away? Call 1-800-457-9695 right now for your free TV. The drums of war rumble as clouds of hell churn. Fate of mankind rests on the will of an immortal. Will he overcome the wrath of ancient evil? Can he save his beloved? Aram Collegion presents Whispers, now on Amazon. Daniel Newman from Vampire Diaries and The Walking Dead said, This is my new favorite vampire book. Priyanka blogs by far, This is one of my favorite books this year. It's finally here, an easy service business with a 24-year record of success. Before now, this service was only available in Hawaii. For the first time, Curb to Curb is offering our complete business model to entrepreneurs in every state in the country. No franchise or licensing fees. You own and control 100% of the business. You can easily double your money in 30 days. For just $5,000, you can fast-track your future. Just visit our website at curb to curbus That's Curb, the number two, Curb.us. And own this amazing money-making business today. And start now to change your life forever. We've all heard of male enhancement, but now there's an expert on true male enhancement in the areas that really count. In Herb Ellis's book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, you'll find answers to questions like, why doesn't she want to have sex? A quick start, quick results workout guide. Plus, what you can do as a side hustle to make money now. With all the great tips in this book, every man can benefit. Get the book, Husband 2.0, Real Male Enhancement, on Amazon.com. Hey folks, if you're anything like me, you spend a lot of time taking photos with your mobile phone or posting them to Facebook or Instagram. Well, did you know that you can actually be earning hundreds, even thousands of dollars each month just by uploading them to Instagram? Now, most people are skeptical at first, but this system is the real deal. You can get your hands on an evaluation copy of Instagram Profit, and you can be ready to see money flowing into your account. There are over 150 million users on Instagram, yet less than 1% of them are taking advantage of these money-making secrets. Now, if they knew they could be paying their rent, making their car payment, or just snapping photos and putting them onto Instagram, I bet they would be glued to their cell phones. There are only a limited number of these spots available, however. So if you visit MoneyMatters3.com right now, you can sign up to take advantage of all the special discounts. That's right, go to MoneyMatters, the number 3, dot com and get all the info there moneymatters three dot com log on now attention business owners we know that owning a business means getting things done right now so if your right now list includes a new building call the right now company general steel we can design a building for your business quickly and save you thousands of dollars that's right thousands you may think general steel only builds large projects or that you can't afford general steel quality well check these prices how about a 40 by 60 foot building for under twenty two thousand dollars or even a 50 by 100 for under thirty five thousand dollars that's right a five thousand square foot building for under thirty five thousand and these buildings all have general steel quality best of all you can still order a building and have it delivered in time to build this year how's that for right now so if your right now list includes a new building call the right now company general steel 800-393-5756 800-393-5756 that's 800-393-5756 
603-672-0573 is a toll-free number to call should you wish to join me here on the Rod Echo Show. As we continue on this Monday morning. Now, one of the things that um, that has left an indelible mark on all of us, and whether whether we like to think so or not, is, and, and this just goes to point out how one person can leave an influential mark for generations to come. And not not somebody who's 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 a a massive political dictator like Adolf Hitler. Somebody a little less benign, if you will. Somebody a little quieter. But nonetheless, I I, I mean, I suppose some people could call this particular person rather evil. Uh, I don't I don't know if he's just evil or, or if he's just you know a dictatorial wannabe or 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 if he's just misguided. He's 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 a person that's no longer with us physically, but he has one particular book that politicos the world over idolize, refer to, have read multiple times. You got to ask you, you got to ask yourself how many times did Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama read their copy of Rules for Radicals? by Saul D. Alinsky. By the way, Saul Saul Alinsky is a Russian Jew. Now, you don't even you don't even have to take out the Jew part, but Russian. He was born in nineteen oh nine. So that was pre-Russian Bolshevik Revolution. Remember that? Well, no, none of us remember that because none of us were alive. We probably, you know, if you're under the age of 30 or 35, you probably, it was probably a footnote in your history class. But it was a very big turning point in man's history. Because Saul Alinsky, he basically took something, he took a premise from another Rusky, if you want to call him that, Karl Marx. Yeah, Karl Marx had a, had a manifesto too called the Communist Manifesto. Now, socialism and communism are, are, are closely related both have the same goal in mind. The two main similar goals are wealth redistribution and government control. The third aspect is shared misery. Since they both claim that what what their what their whole premise behind Marxism or communism and socialism is is, to, is is it'll be a tidal wave to lift all boats. But the reality is, is it's not. These are systems, these are governmental and economic systems that don't lift all boats. But rather ground them all. So they can't sail anywhere. You know, a, a boat is a magnificent thing, unless it's in, unless it's located on dry land. A boat can travel here, and it can go far. It can go all around this world, and it can even do it without fossil fuels. There's not another vehicle on this planet that can traverse this world so far without using fossil fuels. And carry lots of people. Sure, you know we got people out there trying to, to, to use these so, these new solar airplanes that they're trying. But hey, are they carrying passengers yet? No. So right now and throughout the history of mankind, there hasn't been anything but a boat 
that can tra- traverse the great distances around this globe and go all around the globe because, you know, water's everywhere. The oceans are everywhere, just about. It is the most mobile vehicle man has ever created. But if you take that boat and you put it on land, it will not and cannot go anywhere. And that's exactly what Marxism slash communism and socialism intends to do. It it intends to take all of those wonderful boats that are you and me and stick us on dry land where we cannot sail anywhere at any time to do anything. And when they stick you on that dry land where you cannot move, then they'll say, well, yeah, that's what government's here for. We're going to tax and strip all the wealthy people and redistribute your, uh, the wealth so that you'll be able to move again. The problem is, is that you think you're moving, but you're not because as soon as the government money runs out, you're not moving anymore. And then you look around and you turn around, and you look and you realize you haven't moved anywhere because you're you're like a boat stuck on dry land but that was Saul Alinsky's intent now you could say it was because of you know where he grew up where he was born his family's history in Russia all that kind of stuff I get that but the point is is that you live in America now and what I do not get is how anybody could be born and raised in this country and think that the best possible way is to have the government control everybody else's life by taking all of those all 300 million boats and shoving them all on dry land so they cannot move. That's what we got in Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. Bernie Sanders is far worse than Hillary when it comes to that kind of stuff, but as president... Got to tell you, Hillary, would be, out of the five that are currently in the race right now, Hillary by far would be the worst choice for this country. Now, frankly, I understand that, you know, you could say, well, the Republicans what, didn't stop Obama. Well, no, they really didn't. But you can even see the Democrats are not so enthralled with Bernie Sanders. I think it would be a united front if Bernie Sanders was somehow to get elected as president. You'd see a united front on most issues to prevent Bernie Sanders from accomplishing his agenda. Because even at this point, uh, even the you know Democrats aren't even that far leftist. Not yet, anyway. Oh, sure, you, you know the the, the millennials are, will keep getting older. And, and the old guard Democrats will keep getting older, and they'll keep dying out. And then pretty soon, you know, you have the, you'll have this millennial class, which is just as large as some say, if not a little bit larger than the baby boomers. Well, they're going to be the ones in charge in their middle age, in their 40s and 50s. God help us all. And I'm speaking, generally speaking, I realize that not every single millennial is is, is an awful little, you know, self-absorbed selfish little punk i get that but you have you have the majority you have a movement within them and might i ask this whole notion with all right let's get down to brass tacks for a second this is i'm not really digressing here this is still part of this whole issue that i'm talking about now over the weekend Late last week and, and over the weekend, we, we, we had what? We had these demonstrations, right, against Donald Trump. Now, I'm going to start, I'm going to, to some people, I'm going to sound a bit bigoted here, but I'm not. Not at all. As I have said, and, and I, it's just stupid that I have to preface this. I have lots of Latino friends, Puerto Rican, Mexican, Mexicano, as they say, Mexican, Guatemalan. Brazilian, Venezuelan. I have a lot of friends who are from what we would call Latin America. And I'm pretty close with some of them. 
And I have no issue with their heritage, the color of their skin. Although some of them, you know, some of them are kind of liberal, so I have an issue with their politics, but that's about it. But when I see people out there in, in, in California protesting, not, not, not that they're protesting per se. Right. One, they're, 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 that's not really a protest. It's just civil disobedience, and I get that. Yeah, let me make a comparison. You have liberal protests today. And out there in California, all those wonderful protesters that we saw, they're all waving the Mexican flag. Again, great. If you're in Mexico, wave that flag all you want to. But do not be in the United States of America demanding that the United States citizen pay your way while you're waving another country's flag. That's not the way this works. Sure, maybe you have a right to demonstrate, but you do not have a right to block others from living their lives. You can peacefully demonstrate all you want to. But as soon as you start interfering with somebody else's constitutional rights to live their life and do what they want to do and go about their daily business without being in, uh, you know, upended and, and inhibited by you, well, that's... When the gloves come off in my in my book, and I know that the, you know that the cops have, they've got to play this and they got to be careful with it, but I'd say start start cracking some skulls when these kids do this, because that's not demonstrating, that's rioting. When you start jumping up and down on people's cars and flipping over police cars, that's not demonstrating, that's rioting. And there's nobody to blame. You can't blame the cops because the cops didn't do hardly anything. Now, let me make a comparison. You got liberals out there who are saying they have a right to demonstrate. Sure, great, go right ahead. And they're causing all kinds of property damage. They're trying to intimidate people from exercising their freedoms. All because they want some freebies. Now let's go back in history roughly, I don't know, 50 or 60 years. Let's go back to the, to the, uh, the start of civil rights. Did we not have demonstrations? Oh wait, they were mostly peaceful. They only got contentious when, when cops overstepped their authority, didn't they? So we got civil rights marchers. We got civil rights demonstrations. Most of them vastly, pe- vast, the vast majority of them peaceful. No property damage. Nothing of the sort. They weren't jumping up and down on police cars. They weren't overturning cars in the streets. They weren't setting fires to to stuff. They weren't throwing Molotov cocktails. Here's the difference. Back then, what you had was a bunch of conservatives protesting and demonstrating for civil rights, equal rights. What you have today is a bunch of liberals who are protesting, demonstrating, and rioting for special handouts. So they're demanding that you enslave them more. And they're rioting to get that. We're back in the civil rights days of, of Martin Luther King and, 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 and so many wonderful people who worked back then for civil rights. They were demanding freedom. So if at any time you were to think, who would have more of a reason to be violent and cause destruction? Well, it would be the people who are fighting for freedom. 
Instead, you have people who are who are being destructive and fighting for enslavement. Now that that has got to be the most bass backwards thing that you've ever heard of. But it's the truth. Think about it. We got a bunch of millennials and, and some adults. And I don't consider, at this particular point, I don't consider most millennials to be adults. So I separate and delineate the two. So you've got mostly millennials and some adults out there who are claiming that they want, well, uh, they, they claim they want free stuff. But let's face it, if somebody's going to give you something, who controls you? You or the person who's giving it to you? Well, the person who's giving it to you. So they're they're fight they're literally rioting for to to be put in 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 an enslaved mentality situation. They want to be enslaved, and they're they're fighting and rioting to be enslaved. Yeah. Did, did anybody ever think that they would ever see the day where people would literally fight? to be enslaved in, in a free country, you know, a country that's known freedom. Now you could, you could say, you could argue that people who've never known freedom, they don't understand it, uh, it that, that they would be kind of scared of freedom and they would probably want to, uh, want to uh, fight to keep the way things were because, you know, they don't know any different. But here you got a, you got a bunch of millennials, you got a bunch of liberal adults who know the difference, who've lived the difference and yet they want to go the way of enslavement and they want to bring all of us whether we want it or not into their enslaved world and they will riot and they will they will uh they will block they will try to deny your freedom they will even try to physically harm you in order to get their way of enslavement they don't want to enslave you they just want the right to be enslaved. They want the so-called free stuff. That's, that, that's just our educational system. How, how bad is that? So what we're fighting for here is just to prevent is, is to prevent a bunch of children from getting what they want because they don't really want what they think they want. You know, you, you, know, what it, you never knew what you wanted when you were a kid, right? You know, you, you know your parents knew better. You, know, you thought you wanted to have endless supply of, of, of sweets and treats and junk food and candy. And sometimes when you overindulge, what happened? You felt sick. Well, your parents knew that that would happen. So most of the time, they kept you from doing that. Well, these kids today, not only do they want, they want all this stuff... They, they, they've most of them have felt what it was like to be sick from that from too much of the good stuff, but they don't care. Either they have extremely short memories, which is highly possible, or they just they just don't want to grow up and take responsibility for themselves, and they'll use any excuse to say, "Well, they can't do it." No. Somebody's got, I guess, you know, we parents, we adults, we got to be the parents here. You know, it used to be that, sure, maybe you helped out your, your kids, uh, you know, as, as if they ran into trouble you, you, when, when they were adults, young adults, and you, they, as they were moving on through life, you helped them as best you could. You weren't giving them handouts. Most people weren't. Uh, you, you were trying to help them help themselves. Because those kids were, your kids were struggling, but they wanted to grow up. Today's kids don't want to do that. Millennial generation, they, they, they want to sit at home and play games all day long. If they can't do exactly what they think they want to do, then they want to huff and puff and pout and claim that the whole world is against them. And so they want all their free stuff because they deserve it. They haven't contributed anything yet, but they think they deserve all this stuff. 
Think about that. And this is one of the things that that, uh, Alinsky has brought to light. in his rules for radicals. Now, I wanted to take this occasion just to go over some of those things. I mean, mean, you got all kinds of... um, You got all... All kinds of people, you know, speaking so wonderfully about Saul Alinsky and his rules for radicals. (laughs) 